Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the Takahashi TS-65 V1 type. This telescope came out in 1976 after the dramatic success of some of the other scopes from the Takahashi line, specifically the P-type and the D-type and the wonderful TS-80 uh, semi-apochromats. Uh, anyway, those scopes had come along and they, I believe, I'm just guessing here, they needed something that was more uh, sort of acceptable to the masses in a lower price range. Uh, this is a bargain Takahashi, believe it or not. This is a 65 millimeter aperture telescope, 800 millimeters focal length, so it's a fast telescope. It's also on a, a very uh, modest mount. It's plenty adequate, it's a nice mount. Um, but the V1 mount is not as robust as uh, some of the previous mounts, specifically the D mount, which is a monster. Anyway, this thing has the same amount of aperture, um, not as great uh, color correction, but in this aperture telescope and this focal ratio, it really is going to perform just fine. As a matter of fact, the images in this scope are superb, just really good. It doesn't have perfect color correction, but it's very good. It's very acceptable. Um, it's got all the, basically the standard features of a Takahashi. I love this mount. I love the elegance of this mount. Let me loosen this up and show it to you from a couple different angles. This thing is just beautiful. And of course, It came with a, a longer slow motion. I didn't, uh, I didn't have one to substitute here, so I put a shorter one on there. It works fine. Here are some price comparisons for you. The D-Type in 1979 was about twice as much as the V-1 type, and the P-Type was maybe 25% more. So the V-1 type was a little less expensive. To put that in current terms, it's about $800 U.S. in 2023. Can you imagine paying that much for a 65mm telescope? Wow! Here are some price comparisons with other brands. Vixen 60mm, Carton 60mm, about the same. Unitron 114, Altaza on that scope, uh, is quite a bit less. And the Goto 65mm is an unbelievable, like twice as much as the V1 type. This mount does have a means of adjusting for latitude. Loosen this nut, and then this finger will allow you to adjust that. I want you to notice, this is as far north as I can go, at least with that bolt in there. I might be able to do so a little bit further if I take the bolt out. That is only about 45 degrees or so. This is a 45 degree angle. Let's see how far south it will go. That's it. That's pretty good. That's maybe 10 degrees or so. So it has a rather limited amount of uh, latitude adjustment. I've taken the bolt out now, and now I can adjust it all the way back. I don't know, maybe 60 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. That's probably close to 60 degrees, but that's without the adjustment bolt. This is a tripod hub from a TS-65 D-Type. A nice, big, healthy telescope, as you can tell. This is the tripod hub for a TS-65 V1 type. This is the leg from a TS-65 D-Type. This is the leg from a TS-65 V1 type. This is a leg from a TS-65 P-Type. Here's the TS-65 V1 type next to the TS-65 P-Type. Just for comparison, you can see that they're quite uh, almost the same size mounts, almost the same size OTA even. This is only 800 millimeters, so it's not much longer than the 500 millimeter here. Everything is uh, quite similar, and they're uh, about the same weight. I've now got the TS-65 V1 type set up next to the TS-50. 
Uh, these scopes, as you can see, are almost exactly the same size. You might really easily get confused by the two. The mounts are about the same size, the counterweights are about the same. Uh, the tube diameter, of course, is going to give it away somewhat. I hope you've enjoyed this video about the TS65 V1 type. Thank you very much for watching.